at the very outset of this video presentation i want to announce that today's assignment is on a poem and the name of the poem is a tiger in the zoo and the name of the poet is leslie norris now to be precise the topic to be covered in this video presentation is a detailed discussion of the poem which i have just mentioned that is the poem entitled a tiger in the zoo now my dear students i welcome you all to my educational channel the name of my educational channel is priyankar dotto here you will find video presentations on english language and literature of school level college level as well as of competitive examinations now we shall approach the text of the poem entitled a tiger in the zoo but before approaching to the text we shall analyze the title of the poem the title of the poem is formed of five words the first two words does not seem to us as something unusual because we all know what a tiger is if we try to sum up our conception or perception of the tiger we can say that a tiger is a ferocious animal it's a wild animal it can be found in the forest but the second part of the title gives us an impression of something unusual it tells us that the tiger is in the zoo but as i have just mentioned the forest is the natural habitat of the tiger so see seeing a tiger in the zoo or thinking of a tiger in the zoo is something unusual so in the title itself the poet is trying to focus the conflict between the natural habitat of the tiger which is the forest and the artificial habitat of the tiger which is the zoo the first stanza of the poem begins in this manner he stalks in his vivid stripes the second word of the first line is stalks it means walks angrily the tiger walks in the zoo that is expected the tiger is symbolic of activity so the tiger is supposed to walk in the zoo and it is quite possible that the tiger feels quite confined in the narrow surroundings of the zoo so it is natural on the part of the tiger to loiter in the zoo but the word is not simply walks it is stalks means walks angrily now we shall try to guess what the cause of the anger of the tiger is however now we shall move to the second part of the first line here the poet says in his vivid stripes the body of the tiger is striped we all know that the body of the tiger is predominantly yellow and there are black stripes on the yellow color so we all know about the striped body then the poet says vivid vivid means bright extremely clear we all know that the texture or the color of the body of the tiger is extremely bright so it is all expected now we shall move to the second line the poet says the few steps in his cage so the tiger is in the cage in the cage of what in the cage of the zoo so it can move not as many steps as it wants to take but as many steps as the narrow confinement of the cage allows it so it is clearly a case of enforced confinement on the part of the tiger then in the third line the poet says on pads of velvet quiet the tiger walks rather stalks on pads of velvet that is there is some kind of cushioning in the paws of the tiger 
and the cushioning is as soft as velvet. So since the cushioning is there, the movement of the tiger within the cage does not produce any sound. In the final line of the first stanza, the poet says, in his quiet rage. Now, if we think of the verb of the first line that is talks, I have also just told that the verb talks means walks angrily. Once again, the poet refers to, rather reiterates the image of anger on the part of the tiger. That's why he uses the word rage. Rage means anger. But the poet does not give vent to its anger. That's why the poet tells the tiger quiet. But if we think that the tiger is a ferocious animal, so it is natural on the part of the tiger to express its anger. And the cause of the anger, as we have just got the impression from our reading of the first stanza, is the enforced confinement in the cage of a zoo. Now we have to understand why the tiger is quiet. The tiger is quiet because it is beyond his capacity to break himself away from the cage. Since it is impossible to express its violence, there is no meaning of its expressing its violence because it cannot get out of the cage. That's why it is quiet. So, from our reading of the first stanza of the poem, we have come to know that the tiger has been put in the cage of the zoo against its own will. That's why the tiger is angry. The tiger walks a few steps because his freedom of movement has been curtailed or curbed by the narrow confinement of the cage. And the final thing about the poet's idea of the tiger is that the poet has used the pronoun he in place of the tiger rather than the grammatically correct pronoun it to suggest that the poet is thinking of the tiger as he thinks of a human being that is the poet is the poet has humanized the tiger that's why he feels for the loss of freedom on the part of the tiger it seems as if the poet can probe into the heart of the tiger and understand the cause of the anger of the tiger. Now we shall move to the second stanza. If we look at the second stanza of the poem, we shall see that the second stanza begins in this way. The poet says he should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass. The poet tells that it was expected that the tiger which is now in the cage of the zoo would be in the shadowy part of the forest. It would lurk. Lurk means hide secretly. It would wait for something to or someone to come. Where would it wait? It would wait in the shadow. Shadow means a place without light. So, the word shadow creates an impression of a forest. And in contrast to the shadow which can be found in the forest, there stands the zoo or the cage in the zoo which is fully lit for the visitors to come and look at the tiger for the sake of entertainment. Then if we look at the modal verb, 
used in the first line of the stanza. We shall see that the moral verb is should. The poet is trying to say that it was natural that this tiger was in the forest, but it is no more in the forest, it is in the cage of the zoo. Sliding through the long grass, what would the tiger do there? It would slide through the long grass. Slide means move secretly and quietly. It's a kind of stealthy movement. So the verb sliding refers to some kind of secrecy for some hidden purpose. Then we shall know what the purpose is near the water hole. The poet tells that the tiger should have moved through the long grass smoothly and quietly and wet near the water hole means water source where the plump deer pass. It is the place side by which the fat deer or the mature bodied deer pass and there the tiger would wait secretly for the deer to come and then he would pounce on the deer, kill them and eat them. So life was some kind of a or rather attra of an attraction or full of excitement, full of activity on the part of the tiger so far as its life in the forest is concerned but in the zoo it has a very stable life so a life which has no variation the tiger does not need to make any effort to get food when it is there in the zoo but the absence of freedom is what pains the tiger so the poet is constantly focusing on the theme that freedom of life is more valuable than having safety, security and all those positive elements. So the poet compares though suggestively the adventurous life, not simply adventurous, a life full of activity. A life full of activity which the tiger would have got had it been there in the forest. And the poet compares this life with the stale, unadventurous and very safe and secure life of the tiger in the zoo. So the poet is obviously in favor of giving the tiger a kind of natural existence as opposed to the confined existence which the tiger has in the zoo. In the second, sorry, in the third stanza, the poet carries on what the tiger would have done had it been there in the forest or had it not been put in the cage. He tells that he should be snarling around houses at jungle's edge, bearing his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. So, the poet tells that the tiger should be snarling around houses. The tiger would have moved around those houses which are there at the edge or fringe or outer part of the forest. And then the tiger would have snarled, that is, exposed its teeth in an effort to growl. So, the tiger would move in human society for what? For killing human beings or for something else. Now, we shall know from the rest of the stanza. 
what the purpose of the tiger's movement in human society is bearing his white fangs so by in the process of snarling the tiger would have exposed his white teeth his claws also terrorizing the village terrorizing means frightening so the tiger would have attempted to frighten the villagers so the tiger does not attack human beings so the by nature the tiger hunts animals and human beings only when it is prompted to hunt only when it finds that it needs some food it does not kill unnecessarily it frightens the villagers but it does not cause them any kind of harm so this is a very vital point about the tiger which the poet gives us a very simple language now we shall move to the fourth or rather the penultimate stanza of the poem the poet says but he is locked in a concrete cell so the conjunction but refers to a kind of contrast the contrast is between what the tiger expected its life to move or rather to pass and what kind of life it is forced to experience the poet says he is locked in a concrete cell the tiger is caged in a concrete cell in a concrete room concrete means made of bricks cement iron rods etc there is protection there is shelter but the freedom of movement freedom of life has been taken away from the tiger that's why the tiger is angry it does not find any meaning in leading such a kind of life so the phrase concrete cell refers to the cage of the zoo where the tiger has been locked his strength behind the bars so the behind the iron bars the tiger's strength remains unexpressed unexposed so the tiger is a powerful animal but since it has been put inside the cage how can anyone guess about the kind of physical strength that the tiger has then the poet says stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors the tiger stalk or the tiger is found to stalk means move about angrily that verb stalk has already been used in the first stanza so you all know about the word stalk and also its meaning so the length of the cage is somewhat manageable on the part of the tiger so the tiger is moving in that way so far as breadth or width is concerned it is too small for the tiger to move its body and since the tiger is dissatisfied and at the same time angry at the kind of life it has to lead quite against its own will it does not care for those visitors who come to see it we go to the zoo to look at the wild animals which we cannot see which we cannot do by going to the forest itself because there is the risk of life the animals come attack us at any moment and our life may become endangered that's why we become visitors of the zoo and we go there to look at the wild animals put in the cage we get some kind of delight 
by looking at those animals from so close a distance. But the animals in general and here the tiger does not want to look at those human beings at all. It ignores them. It avoids them. That's why very often we go to the forest, sorry, we go to the zoo, we find that the chimpanzee or the gorilla or the tiger has got inside the cave. Of course the art artificial cave which the zoo authority prepares and does not show any interest to come out. That is, they become bored, they do not want to show their face. They are dissatisfied with the kind of life which they are leading. They want a life of freedom, even though it may be a life of struggle, the struggle for existence. So, it is the mental dissatisfaction and at the same time anger, which on the part of the wild animals make them ignore the visitors when those human beings go to the zoo to look at the animals put in the cage or other cages. Now we shall focus on the final stanza of the poem. Here the poet says, He hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars. There are some cars on which or other in which people come. They are the staffs of the zoo. They move about the entire periphery of the zoo. They look at the animals and make an inspection if everything is okay in the zoo. So when those people come at night, the tiger is still awake. So it hears the voice of those human beings who come there by car to make an inspection before they go to sleep. The tiger is still awake. From our own experience, we can say that our dissatisfaction or anger at something else makes us so unnerved that we cannot sleep when we are supposed to sleep. So it is what happens with the tiger. It is dissatisfied. It is angry. That is why it remains awake. It hears the voice of those human beings who come by car or rather by a car to move around the cage and make an inspection before going to bed in a kind of satisfied frame of mind. The tiger does not go to bed, does not sleep. The poet makes this assumption. He tells that and stares with his bright, sorry, brilliant eyes. The tiger looks with his brilliant eyes. The word brilliant here means bright. The tiger looks with his bright eyes. The word stares means not simply looks. It means looks steadily and fixedly. Where does the tiger look? It looks at the brilliant stars. Brilliant means twinkling. Now the tiger looks at the stars. Why? Why does the tiger look at the stars? This is an important point. If we look at the stars twinkling, we shall see that the sky is entirely dark. But still, the stars are twinkling, that is, the stars have that freedom to express their existence and it is this freedom of existence which the poet, sorry, which the tiger wants to have but feels that, finds that it does not have that sense of freedom of existence because 
it has been put in the cage against its own will. So we shall see that the poet has full sympathy for the tiger which has been put in the zoo against its own will. Now we have to think why the tiger which is in the zoo has been made the central object of a particular poem because we have all gone to the zoo we have seen tigers and other wild animals put in the cage so why is the poet so concerned about the fact that tigers are being put in the cage if we think about environmental issues we can easily assume that the poet is concerned about the human practice of trapping wild animals putting them in the cage of the zoo for the sake of earning money by giving entertainment to common human beings has a baneful effect on the food chain. The number of tigers is already decreasing due to poaching, the rapid industrialization and henceforth the rapid deforestation and side by side if this practice of putting human beings sorry tigers in the cages persists it will affect human existence to a great extent so with a greater purpose in mind with a greater threat at sight the poet is trying to warn the fellow human beings about the baneful effect or baneful effect of the practice of putting tiger in the zoo. So this is all what I have to say about the poem. Now before I go to the valedictory note, here is an important declaration. In the description part of this video presentation, you will find a link by clicking on the link you will be able to go to my personal blog or website where you will be able to view materials rather all types of materials that is word notes paraphrase mcq type questions extract based questions short questions as well as long answer type questions from the poem so before concluding this video presentation i request you to subscribe my channel to share my video presentations to your friends to put forward your comment and your queries in the video present sorry in the comment section of the video presentation i thank you all see you again in my next video presentation thank you